Hey everyone, it's ZipDude here. Welcome to my video where I show you how to replace a video screen on a five and a half generation iPod Classic. This also works the same for a fifth generation iPod. I had my iPod for many years now. Unfortunately, it fell out of the cabinet and hit the counter below, just perfect where it broke the screen. So I ordered one off eBay and I'm gonna show you exactly what I got. And I'm going to also show you how to take everything apart, give you some tips to avoid the issues I had to deal with. And I'll show you how to put it back together, troubleshoot it, and show you a functioning, complete working iPod at the end. Okay, here's the screen. Now let's take the iPod apart. First thing we wanna do is Flip the hold button, you'll see the red or orange areas exposed. That lets you know that everything is locked, so now you can't accidentally push a button and turn on the iPod while you're doing the repair. The easiest way to open this is squeeze on the side and get a plastic tool and try to pry between the white part where it's plastic and the stainless steel back. There are little clips in there that hold everything together, so if once you get the device in there, just wiggle back and forth until the clips start separating. Then you can slide down the rest of the iPod and then work around the top and bottom and the other side till you finally separate it. But be careful when you separate it because there are two ribbon cables that are attached to things on the back of the case that we're gonna need to remove so we can work on the screen area better. The first cable we want to work on is the battery cable. There's a little tab that you pull up and then the ribbon cable will just slide right out. Now we'll take the white rubber bumper off that surrounds the hard drive and then we will flip the hard drive down towards the six o'clock position. There's a ribbon cable that's attached there that we're going to remove, but we'll do that after we get the remaining cable that holds the hold button and the volume uh, headphone jack uh, connections. You can see here there's a little bailing wire that kind of goes over and clips everything in place for this ribbon cable. You just want to flip up on that gently. It's a little black thing there, and we'll just pull ever so slightly and pull out the ribbon cable. If there's anything that seems like you're forcing it, then it's not disconnected. Now that we have the back separated, it's time for us to do the same thing to remove the hard drive. Once again, there's a little bailing clip that holds everything in place here. So I wanna pry that up. You can see there it's removed. And now the ribbon cable will just gently remove from the hard drive. You gotta remember these things are almost 20 years old. So you have to be gentle with these plastic devices and stuff. Now we'll remove the two gray rubber cushions that are on either side of the 30 pin cable. Put them on the side. And our next move is to remove the six little Phillips screws. There's three on each side. Okay, now since the screws are removed, we can now separate the front of the case from the circuit board. What we want to do is keep your finger on the click wheel and push. It'll end up separating the two pieces. Keep your finger on that click wheel because if you don't, it'll flop around and the center button will fall out and uh, it just makes it easier this way. Now to remove the screen. You can see this also has a ribbon cable that goes into the logic board. There is another bailing wire clip that holds it in place. We wanna flip that up and then we'll be able to pull out the ribbon cable gently and then our screen will be out and we can put the new one in. And you can see here a comparison of the two screens. They look the same. 
The new one that I have has a protective film on the front, so don't be worried about manhandling it until you get it installed. We'll remove that at the end. Also, there's some exposed area, uh, soldering areas on the ribbon cable. I took a piece of scotch tape and just covered that because I didn't want it rubbing up against the board. Now, to put this in, there's two little prongs that stick out. We want to slide them right into the front. And everything will clip into place there. Flip it over. And now we're going to try and put the ribbon cable back into the socket. And a little word of advice when you're putting the bailing wire back down on this one, put a thumb on either side of it and you push down. I ended up using the clip or the, the tool to actually try to do this and I broke it. There was just too much pressure, the thing's too old and uh, well, I ended up doing a work around with this by putting some tape on the cable at the point where it meets the socket. Okay, if your center button falls out, now's the time to put it back in. There are four little recesses, so it's kind of hard to mess up. You just got to get it in there and you're good to go. Flip the case over, get it where it needs to go. And I got a little foreman here that's telling me what to do and looking to whack my parts around. Okay. All right, now I'm going to put the case back on. And it's just pretty much align it up and push it down. And you'll hear it kind of click into place once everything mates up. Now we're going to put the six Phillips screws back in to hold the case together. Now to connect the hard drive, push it in, flip the clip over, and just get everything seated back in. The little blue rubber cushions that are there um, are gummy for me. So like over the years, I guess the chemicals in it break down and it's, it's sticky. Once we do that, it's time to connect the first ribbon cable from the back of the unit. We'll put it in, flip the clip down, and just give it a little gentle pull to make sure that it's connected. Now we're going to do the same thing with the battery. Just slide that ribbon cable into the slot and then push down on that gray retaining clip. And give it a very gentle tug and we're in place so that's good. Also, this was a replacement battery because my original battery died. So I decided to take some time to put two-sided tape on it so it'll actually stick to the back of the case. Okay, we're just going to push everything together. You'll hear it clip and snap. And let's see what's going on here. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but the colors are inverted. And you can really see how messed up it is when I play a video. So I'm going to do a reset on this and do the diagnostics. Hold the center button in the menu until it turns off. 
And once you see the Apple logo, slide it from the menu button over to the previous while still holding the center button. And that puts it into diagnostics mode. I'm gonna let it manually do its diagnostics. And then once it's done, I'm gonna do a couple manual tests myself here, reset it and see what happens. Well, it's fixed. I guess the iPod just needed to go through everything since it has the new piece to recognize it or something. I'm not quite sure, but the colors are right. It's doing what it's supposed to. And I did verify. I put a headphone into the headphone jack and I do have music. So everything works well. I hope this video was useful to you. And, you know, I, I do get a little special pride in keeping these old devices alive. If this was of use to you, please share, like, and subscribe. Tell a friend. Thanks for watching.